Freddy's vs. Death Race 2000. Enjoy. The following podcast contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Showdown with Corey Miller, Brad Scott, and Vic Miller. A debate over what movie is better. Corey's choice versus Brad's choice. They each plead their case and try to destroy the other person's. It's a combat of subjective opinion. Vic is the impartial judge, and his say is always final. Welcome to episode 13 of the Showdown Podcast. I'm your host and referee, Vic Miller. And tonight's episode is Death Race Devastation and Fighting Out of the Blue Corner. From Indianapolis, Indiana, Showdown Podcast and co-host, the daring director, the wise and of three wise men production, it's Corey the Crusher Miller. Facing his opponent in the red corner, our co-host hailing from the Motor City. He's the broad ripple grotto, the ferocious funny man. It's Brad, the destroyer of Corey Miller Scott. For the three in attendance and the millions we hope are downloading around the world, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to grumble. That's right, folks. This episode's fight will be decided in two rounds. I got these bitch slaps and your mama jokes are loud. And as always, low blows are greatly encouraged here on the Showdown Podcast. Um, normally I have a nice little sound cue, uh, but I didn't really have shit. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I really was dreading this, uh, this category. Uh, I don't like racing. The one man it, in Indianapolis that doesn't I like know, racing. I know, I don't like racing. Like, and nothing against race fans. I just find it boring and pointless and it doesn't keep my attention. So, like, a racing movie, like, I was, like, jerking and doing the jerk-off motion, like, ugh, this is good. But, uh, I chose Death Race 2000 because it seemed to be the most interesting racing movie, and goddamn, I'm so happy. And probably the oldest <laughs> racing movie. Oh, my gosh. Like, I think it was made right after they invented the wheel. Um, I like to think of it as, uh, well, it's, it's called Death Race 2000, or as Fox News would call it, a documentary of the Obama administration. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. Was uh, there even a black man in this movie? Uh, uh, no, there was not. Uh, well, there was, there was some in the background, I think, at times. And they got ran over by uh, <laughs> They may have. Uh, well, uh, I, I kind of think of this movie as... Uh, uh, wacky races meets the purge. Yeah, like that. Like it, I kept waiting for Dick Dastardly and Muttley to show up in the meme machine. <laughs> you know that would have made this movie like ten times better. <laughs> uh, so basically, the movie is it's called Death Race Two Thousand. It is set in the future, uh, the year two thousand, uh, fourteen years ago. Uh, the movie was made in nineteen seventy nine. Uh, stars David Carradine, uh, who was uh, breathing very well through this uh, film, uh, <laughs> uh, but kills it. He let it sit. He yeah, let it sit. There he is. He's learning. <laughs> uh, basically, the movie it, it's so it's from the seventies and it takes place in what is supposed to be the future, the year two thousand, and uh, it's. Short, so it's, it was like 1979 is when it was made, right? Because then... I think it was 70, 75. 75? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, in 1979, I believe, is when the first... Or 1980, the first uh, death race started, right? Uh, basically, or it's, they don't even call it the death race. They call it the, uh, the, the, the transcontinental... Uh, what the hell was that called? I don't know. No, I'm going to find it here. Transcontinental. This is great radio. <laughs> Good thing it's a podcast. You're going to edit this out, right? I should have edited it out. I the Transcontinental Road it. Race. Transcontinental Road Race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, he, he claims to know nothing about racing and it's being shown. Yeah. Um, so so basically, it's a, they start in New York, which is the futuristic New York, which was amazing. It had so many mountains. And, yeah, and the big Seattle Space Needle yes. thing sticking up. Uh, th- those crowd shots in the, in the very beginning, uh, you know, right after uh, the announcer, Elton John, uh, <laughs> welcomes everybody. Uh, welcome to the race, everybody. <laughs> well, I, I liked I liked the uh, the racetrack view and the obvious painting that they used for the crowd. And then if you looked, there was a tram that goes. Well, yeah, yeah. A tram that's so obvious, like they just took a piece of paper and moved it across the screen. <laughs> 
but that added to, I thought it added to the uh, to the heart. <laughs> um, so you have so they start. I mean, and it gets right to the action. I mean, you start the movie off at the beginning of the race after kind of a brief uh, little thing that tells you <clears throat> what's you know what's led to the events. Uh, it's a total dictatorship. It's one guy who's been elected. Uh, it's Mr. President, and he's Mr. President for life, and he runs everything. And every year they do this transcontinental. What was it called? Road race. Transcontinental Road Race. Transcontinental Road Race Pretty from New York to name. LA. From New York to LA, uh, and it's not just a. Uh, it's not just based on speed. It's uh, also uh, based on the number of innocent civilians you murder along the way. Yeah, point values. Uh, so you have the first thing is the racers. Uh, there's cowgirl Jane, who's a giant calamity slut. Jane. Calamity Jane, who's a giant cowgirl slut. Uh, Played by Mary Warnoff. Yep. We're on of. Uh, and then there was the other uh, chick. The other chick, yes. Uh, the the blonde who has a little nerdy guy with the technology car, but that, they don't even have GPS. That was, Matilda, that was Matilda the Hun. Yeah, they still don't even have GPS. Uh, and then you had uh, Sylvester Stallone, my favorite character, uh, who, uh, who plays Ike Turner. <laughs> Basically, just slapping women throughout the entire movie. Slapping bitches, he's a, like uh, so. That, but he's be mean, G, or mean Joe, machine, machine, machine gun, gun Joe. Joe, machine gun Joe. You are just you're all. I with watched this movie for the first time ever last night, <laughs> uh, and I didn't write down Stallone's name for some reason in my notes. What Rod uh, doesn't have listed for you? And then, of course, well, he hasn't gotten to that part yet. Of course, Frankenstein. Wait, you, you forgot Machine Guns, uh, his navigator. Oh, the big titty girl. Yeah, how can you forget her? Well, he didn't forget her. He just refers to her as the big titty girl. Yeah. yeah. Who was that, by the way? Her name, her, her character's name was Myra, played by Louisa Moritz, who some people may know as somebody that's saying that uh, Bill Cosby raped her. She said Bill Cosby raped her? Yeah. I wonder if it was in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe he, he cast her. Maybe well, he maybe got her the part, and this is what she's. Maybe there was a black guy in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but let me. If if you've if you've seen Death Race two thousand, so you've seen what she looks like, you can understand why he would want to hook oh, up. Oh my god, she was hot. You can't ever say why someone should raise somebody. No, I'm not saying that. I said allegedly. Would, Let's I, say allegedly. Now let me clarify. I said he would want to hook up. I didn't say that he raped her. Okay. Or why he would want to. Well, she's saying he didn't. Yeah. Want to. She's saying she's, that he did. Um, so, yeah, she, she she gets smacked around through most of the movie. So she's used to being abused. Yes. Um, and uh, and then you have David Carradine, who plays Frankenstein, who is kind of, uh, he's, he's the only, he's the only guy that survived uh, previous races. He's, he's known as kind of, Always getting blown up and put back together. He's got fra- half his skull is missing, and half his body has been replaced by Swedish uh, allegedly doctors. <laughs> Swedish doctors, um, and uh, yeah, they, they start the race. And uh, there's a point value system, uh, which I, by the way, I also love the Howard Cosell guy. You know, that's who that was supposed to be, right? Howard oh yeah. Cosell. Well, we've got a great race. <laughs> yeah. The point value system has increased this year. Women here's, in all age categories are worth ten more points. Here's what I don't understand about this this movie. Well, first of all, uh, before I, before I say that, I, I want to say when uh, they're all introduced, Sylvester Stallone gets pissed off, so he grabs a machine gun, sitting in the car, and just starts spraying <laughs> the stands. I was like, oh, this. Well, is... you realize that this is like the automobile precursors of the Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's yeah. like, let's let's decrease population <laughs> and have a car. And, and, and that leads to what I was going to say. It's like, what? Where did they? Where did they get in their mind? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to let these people race and just kill people because we've got too many people here. I, I want to know the backstory of this race. Why did it start? It's never mentioned. It's just like, yeah, this is cool. No, 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 no. no. They did the thing at the beginning, right? I mean, they, they did the little like uh, oh, they, they did the little. You thing mean the part the that I had to read? Yeah. <laughs> well, we know if it's, if there's words or black people on the screen, Corey's not paying attention. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think sometimes he may pay attention because the words and the letters are white. Yeah. So they get a little bit of note. Uh, and the whole time, by the way, that this race is going on, there's the resistance, um, which is basically this group of people who think the way Corey does as to why should we be doing this. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. And they plan to basically kill all the racers except for Frankenstein, take him hostage so that they can have leverage against the president, Mr. President. 
Um, and uh, which he didn't really have. His name was Mr. President. Yeah, they never said his actual name. But this, by the way, the scoring system was great. So women are worth ten more in all age categories. So if it's no matter what age they're after, a woman's ten extra bonus points. So they wanted you to really go after the women and kill them. And teens were worth forty. Toddlers were worth seventy, and old people were worth a hundred. So in this, if a, if a if you have a toddler, a female toddler, is she worth eighty? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Female teen is fifty. Gotcha. A female old person <laughs> is one hundred. Yeah. One hundred and ten. Gotcha. Um, w- that that leads to that leads to the funny shot of uh, the hospital. Oh, uh, the the it's uh, euthanasia day yeah. at the geriatric <laughs> hospital, yes. they, and it is. But by the way, uh, so my uh, friend, kind of girlfriend, person, uh, Molly, she's gonna is, love hearing that. Get out there. <laughs> well, well she friend. goes on dates. Uh, she's she's a nurse. You spend money on. And honestly, like, I guarantee you she wouldn't have been horrified at that <laughs> She probably would have been like, I've had that dream. <laughs> I just wondered... You know how fucking hard it is to be a nurse? You know what they have to deal with? I, I bet if, if, it's quite, quite, if there's something that says bedpan, I'm done. Yeah, old <laughs> uh, You did leave out, uh, Frankenstein did have his navigator uh, was Annie Smith, who was also... He didn't find out until a little bit later, but he called on pretty quickly oh, that, she's that she's part, part of, of the, the resistance, resistance as yeah. well. Um, and by the way, I like how um, I like how he's the uh, he's the he's so noble, and he's got you know his, his moral conscience is so there that he doesn't go after the old dying people. He <laughs> yeah. kills the doctors. He goes after the to nurses. Out of their okay, so this is that's actually one of my favorite scenes. This whole thing because if you notice when he hits that first one, she goes flying up in the air. Then another one kind of you see another one bump up. <laughs> but when he hits that clearing, there's one stuck on the yeah. like, center yeah, bridge goes of the into car. the car. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> crack it up. That was a great scene. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> But no, like, that, like yeah, like he uh, that that was pretty funny. And then you start figuring out because uh, he takes off his he has this mask that makes it look like his eyes all fucked up and his face is all fucked up. And he takes that off. And uh, honestly, when he took it off, and I saw David Carradine, I was like, ah, it's worse than I thought. <laughs> and what did those doctors do to you? You're a monster. Uh, <laughs> Bill. But, uh... Oh, somebody else you forgot to mention, too, because, and it's understandable because he was hardly in it, um, was Martin Cove, who played Nero the Hero. He was, he was, he was killed on the first day. Um, I yeah, think he was the first one they killed. Yeah, I think he's... I think his, uh... His, uh... I think his car blew up, didn't it? Yes. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, the dude from Karate Kid. Which, wait, which dude from Karate Kid? He was uh, the sensei. Yeah. Wait, the... Cobra Kai. Yeah, oh, Cobra Kai. Oh, shit. I yeah. didn't even notice. Honestly, because this movie just had me. <laughs> he was your son. He's your sensei. I have... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, let's talk about that. Have we talked about that yet? Hmm. On the artwork for this show? Yeah. Have we talked about that why, in an episode? Why, about why how you're in Cobra, Cobra Kai? Kai? <laughs> <laughs> noble, noble Daniel son across from me. Because he didn't uh, want to wear the black outfit. That's of course not. He's much more comfortable in all white. In all white. There it is. Um, so, anyway, so, uh, and Calamity Jane, I thought, was just a cunt. <laughs> there it is. Just, I was waiting I mean, for it. Just through the whole movie, it's just like get the fuck over yourself. Like she's <laughs> one of those. She's because she wasn't like. I mean, she wasn't that hot. You know, like no, just for she, the way. She, yeah. Exactly. But I did like for for nineteen seventy five. There, there's a difference in 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 what people look at as hot. So that's probably why they count. Yeah. Her. Well, you know what? She was probably out of the out of the. Out of this movie, I might even put her fourth on this list. On the uh, oh, easily. List. I like even even behind the reporter chick, Grace Pander, whoever that Myra or whatever they kept getting beat up by Stallone. <laughs> I thought was the hottest. Yeah, she's number one. Yeah, uh, and then probably the Resistance girl that they Annie were parodying. Yeah, although she had big nipples, which I'm not really a huge fan of, but I could deal with it. Yeah, which I thought was weird, like. Okay, so uh, so anyway, so, so basically the story is they're, they're driving from New York to L.A. David Carradine realizes the bitch is working against him as they're killing off all the other drivers and everything else. He tells her he plans to take out Mr. President himself, so he's kind of part of the resistance. He also tells her that, because uh, she's like, oh, where are all your scars? 
<coughs> and would like, wouldn't have been great. Like, oh, well, bitch. I mean,